You've read the title right. There is such a thing as a gaming projector. I didn't even know these things existed until about a year ago when BenQ asked me if I wanted to review their TH685i projector. Obviously, I said yes. Before we start though, thank you to BenQ for being so patient with me on this review. They sent this to me sometime late last year and I've been pulling an Elon Musk telling them that the review will be out in like two weeks for like the past half a year. All right, let's start with one of the major selling points, which is its gaming prowess. This is a 1080p 120Hz projector, which for the uninitiated means that it can output 120 frames per second, which is twice as fast compared to your standard TV, monitor, or projector, which are usually 60Hz. If you're a gamer, you already know why 120Hz is a good thing. For the newbies out there, this means that if you're gaming, the image will be super smooth and fluid, which will have the added benefits of letting you see what you need to see much easier and faster because twice as much information is being fed to your brain. It's not as good as the 240Hz or 390Hz esports monitors I'm used to, but one, it doesn't have to be because it's a projector, and two, it's damn near close. The input lag of this thing is pretty instant. It actually feels a tiny bit faster than a 120Hz or 144Hz monitor. I used both my PC with an Xbox controller and my PS5 and had no issues getting it to run at 120Hz. Input lag on both systems felt the same, so it's not like the PS5 is going to be at a disadvantage in any way. Also, pixel response times were surprisingly good. Like, really good. I'm not entirely sure how a projector works in terms of mitigating motion blur, but I'll tell you one thing. This has the lowest pixel response times of pretty much anything I've ever tested at this refresh rate. But in order for it to look this clear, you have to go to the projector settings and enable fast mode. This is basically the projector version of black frame insertion, except there seems to be no negatives, not even a lower brightness output. It works on both PC and PS5, but to enable it on the PS5, you have to be running a game at 120 Hertz. Otherwise the option is blocked if you're on the menu. Overall, the gaming experience is very good, and I assume it'll be much better than most other projectors that run at 60 Hz, at least in terms of the input lag and response times. The projector also has a decent built-in speaker. It gets pretty loud and it's pretty clear, but because it's a built-in 5 watt mono speaker, it's not going to blow you away. If you want that cinematic feel, you'll want to have dedicated audio. You also want to make sure you have the projector away from you as far as possible because of the fan. It's a single exhaust fan that takes the heat out, but it's kind of loud. It's not too loud to the point where it's annoying. I don't even notice it anymore because my brain blocks it out. But for that cinematic feel, you'll want it as far away as possible so you hear less fan noise. Also, it can act as kind of a space heater if your room is small enough. Because everything inside is running pretty hot, when the air is pushed out, it's pretty hot, kind of like your car's air temp set to the highest temperature. If you have a room with a size similar to mine, it won't affect the ambient temperature that much, but if you use this in a small room, especially in the summer, you're gonna want an AC running through that room. When it comes to brightness, contrast, and whatnot, it's pretty good, but not perfect. I have my projector mounted above my bed frame, which is about 12 feet away from my wall, and projecting a 140 inch wide display. Now that might be a bit too big for some people at only 12 feet away, but you're not locked into a specific size depending on how far or close your projector is to the wall. There's a zoom wheel which has a pretty big range for smaller and bigger screen sizes. For example, at 12 feet away, I can go from 140 inches all the way down to 110 inches. It's a pretty big range. At first, that didn't sound like much of a difference to my brain because 110 inches sounds like a lot, and it is, but when I saw that 30 inch difference, 110 inches just felt small, so you have a lot of range to choose from. Brightness was also good, but could be better. According to BenQ, it gets as bright as 3500 lumens, which is about 1000 nits, but I'm guessing that's from the bulb, because as soon as the light traveled to the wall, it was only as bright as 80 nits. Now, 80 nits might not sound like a lot, but when you consider the fact that 120 nits is the ideal brightness in a room lit with ceiling lights, and 40 nits is ideal for a pitch black room, I'd say 80 nits is more than enough, especially since usually you'll use a projector in a pitch black room. I use blackout curtains to keep light out my room, but some light does seep through the side of the curtains, and even with that, it still doesn't wash out the image, which is pretty nice. If you want to have more brightness though, you can do so by moving the projector closer to the wall. It can get really bright if the projector is about six feet away from the wall. 
Contrast ratios, on the other hand, were poor. At 603 to 1, blacks will kind of look a little bit gray. Now, it doesn't help that I don't have a dark gray projector screen and instead I'm projecting it to an off-white painted wall, but since I'm still renting, I'd rather have less stuff to move since I move frequently. With that said, if I did have a nice high-quality dark gray screen, contrast would be much better. But the brightness would drop a bit, and honestly, I think the contrast is fine as it is, given the application. It's not like blacks are noticeably gray either. It can get pretty black as long as there's not a lot of bright colors on screen. For example, if I pull up a web page that's pretty white, the Windows taskbar looks pretty gray. But when I open something that's pretty dark, the taskbar is much darker. And when it comes to watching content, it's not really that big of a deal to me because it's not as noticeable, but it is worth pointing out. Next is the color performance. Now, I don't think this is as important for a projector as it would be for a monitor, but I'm Bijan mother damn sheety, so I'm gonna show you anyways. First, it covers 93% of the sRGB color space, which is not far off from the advertised 95% claim. So basically, this projector will have a wide enough color space to project the colors it needs to properly. Color accuracy is good as well, with colors looking mostly the way they're supposed to. Other than the thing I mentioned earlier where a mostly bright screen can wash out some darker parts, colors are mostly accurate. The projector has an average Delta E of 5.11, which is good, but the magenta, cyan, and green range from 12 to 15, and that's very bad. At least, technically it's bad. I was really trying to look to see if these colors were as bad as my calibration software was making it sound, but it still looked passable. One thing that really surprised me though was how crisp a 1080p image could look, especially at 140 inches at 12 feet away. I'm not entirely sure how this whole projector technology works, but if this were a physical panel with this resolution and size, you'd see pixels so big you could use them as stairs. At least, I think. I don't have a 140 inch 1080p TV to compare it to, but I feel like this would be more crisp than a physical panel. And the experience this provides offers more than what the spec sheet would lead you to believe. HDR is also another thing that surprised me because I actually thought it was going to suck given the price points. I guess I'm just used to monitors with HDR sucking at this price, but that isn't the case here, at least mostly. Enabling HDR on Windows makes HDR specific content look much better with HDR than without HDR. Highlights get pretty bright, and scenes that would normally look dull on SDR look much more vibrant and more detailed in HDR. The only thing that sucks about the HDR is that if you wanted to leave it on in the Windows settings, everything except the content you're watching will look like trash, having a massive green tint all over. The same applies on the PS5, except not as bad. In the menus, you still get a green tint, but not as much as you would get in Windows. But when you're playing a game that supports HDR, not only are colors more vibrant and the highlights brighter, but the game overall is brighter, making it easier to see in dark scenes, at least in this case of Ratchet and Clank that you're seeing. Just make sure that when you enable HDR, you're doing it through the PC or the console, not from the projector. Leave it on auto in the projector settings, otherwise you're going to have a miserable time trying to stop the auto source from cycling every millisecond like I did. If you have that problem, the way I fixed it was by taking the HDMI cable out for my PC and plugging it into my PS5. I guess that automatically reset my HDR setting on the projector from always on back to auto. Anyway, overall the viewing experience is pretty good and I actually somewhat prefer it over my TV simply because of the size and HDR. Even though I have a pretty decent TV, a 75 inch 2019 Vizio Quantum P series, the HDR doesn't look much different than SDR. This BenQ projector seemed to do much better in HDR compared to my TV, but on the other hand, my TV's SDR was much better. Now you don't have to plug in a PC or a PS5 to view content in this projector because this is the TH685i, not the TH685 non-i variant. The difference is that this i variant has a built-in Android TV. I say built-in because it's not technically built-in, but it's just another Android TV dongle made specifically for this projector and it slides into the back and can be hidden with this cover so it looks cleaner. It's basically just another Android TV, so you might already be familiar with it, but in case you're not, you got most of your favorite apps like YouTube, HBO Max, Amazon Prime Video, Disney Plus, and so on. You can even go to the apps section to look for more apps like Spotify, Twitch, games, and more. The only major problem I have with this projector is that it doesn't support Netflix. How do I know it's the projector and not the dongle though? Well, simple. I took the dongle out, plugged it into my TV, and installed it no problem. When I plugged it back into the projector, it wasn't there anymore. 
When you go to the download page for Netflix while on the projector, you get this message saying your device isn't compatible with this version. I asked BenQ about this when I first got the projector like eight or nine months ago, and they said they're working on trying to get Netflix supported, but since it's been so long, I guess it'll never come. I could imagine this being a major problem for people who use Netflix predominantly compared to other streaming services. Now, because I'm not a fan of Android in general, I plan on buying another Apple TV to stick it above the projector and just use that. If you plan on using something other than the included Android TV stick, you can either use the exposed HDMI port or the one where the dongle goes into. It's not just locked into the Android TV stick. You also get some other ports like the audio in and out, RS-232, VGA, and a USB port. Another thing you get with the TH-685i that the non-i variant doesn't have is this remote. This is where you can control pretty much everything. You get a power button, autofocus, which this projector doesn't seem to support because every time I press it, this stop sign looking thing pops up, and you also get a vertical keystone to adjust the angle of the projected image. This comes in very handy if you don't want your image looking wider on the top and thinner on the bottom and vice versa. The only problem I found with the keystone is that it does some wonky aliasing and the text looks weird. This isn't a problem if you set the keystone to zero as the text will look perfect, but as soon as you adjust the keystone, text and the edges of a window will have this noticeable angled aliasing. I really only noticed this in Windows though. On my PS5 or when I was watching content, I really didn't notice it so my viewing experience wasn't hindered. Next we have this Familand button for children's content source selector, Amazon Prime video button, navigation buttons, back, home for Android TV, Android TV settings, instant mute, Google assistant button, projector menu buttons, and volume buttons. Before we move on, I want to quickly rant about the volume buttons. Why is it that whenever I hold the volume up or down button, it doesn't increase gradually? I have to keep tapping it. But once I bring the volume bar on screen by pressing the volume buttons, I can hold the left or right navigation buttons and it'll keep increasing or decreasing. Why don't the volume buttons do that? I feel like this is backwards. Okay, rant over. Now, in terms of placing this projector where you want to, you have a few options. You can either place this on a table or a countertop or whatever and adjust these legs by spinning it, or you can mount it like I did with these three M4 screw holes located at the bottom of the projector. Lastly, we have the projector settings. There are a lot of them. First, we have the picture settings to adjust your preset color modes, brightness, contrast, sharpness, more advanced settings to adjust your gamma, color temp, RGB values, noise reduction, brilliant color, which I recommend leaving it at 10, fast mode, which as I mentioned earlier, gives you faster pixel response times, Lumi Expert, which adjusts the brightness and color temp depending on the ambient light in your area, and Light Mode, which I left on normal. Each mode determines the lifespan of your projector bulb, with the normal giving about 4,000 hours of bulb life and Eco giving 15,000 hours. Each mode will affect how the image looks, so figure out what mode you like to use based on the compromises. I just left mine on normal because it looks the best. Next, we have the sound settings to adjust the built-in speaker sound mode. Personally, I like standard. Mute volume, and power on and off ringtone. Then we have the display settings, which lets you adjust the aspect ratio, telling it what wall color you have so it can compensate for that to give you the most accurate colors possible. 3D, which yes, this is 3D capable, you just need to have the glasses. HDR, and digital lens shift to shift the image higher or lower. Then you got your basic system setup for your language, background color, splash screen, projector position, which I have on front ceiling because my projector is set upside down, auto off, direct power on, which turns on the projector automatically once it receives power, which is useful if your outlet is controlled by a light switch. Next, we have the advanced system setup, which lets you check and reset your bulb life, the bowed rate, test pattern, which looks like this, quick cooling, which shortens the cooling time from 90 seconds to 15 seconds when you turn the projector off, high altitude mode, password, key lock, which locks your projector settings so no one accidentally changes them, and lastly, information, which has some basic info. Overall, it seems to be a very robust menu with everything anyone could hope for, but it's my first projector, so I have no clue if this is missing some important features. Should you get this projector though? Maybe. 
After a quick Google search, there doesn't seem to be many 1080p 120Hz options. And since I play a lot of Warzone and other competitive games on my PS5, a high refresh rate projector would be necessary. There are some things that I wish were better, like I would like a bit more brightness at my current 12 feet distance, better contrast ratios, and Netflix support straight out of the box, but I might be asking for too much given the price point. I'm not sure since I'd never really delved into the projector space until now. I've always wanted one, but I've never actually looked at reviews to see what you can get for certain price points. With that said though, for $900, I think you're getting a lot for the price, especially since BenQ is currently throwing in 3D glasses and a 1080p wireless HDMI kit for free. Hey BenQ, hit me up, I really want that HDMI kit. Anyway, the more I think about it, the more this price makes sense to my mind. Like my TV at the time I purchased it, MSRP'd for $1,800, and this projector is half the price. This offers what seems to be like better HDR, way better pixel response times and input lag for gaming, and is almost twice the size. If I bought a 140 inch TV, that would be expensive. But on the other hand, my TV is 4K, has better contrast ratios, and is brighter. But at half the price, I could bring this projector twice as close to my wall and make it much brighter, and I could spend maybe like $200 or so on a nice dark gray projector screen to make my contrast much better. I'm not sure if this is the same thought process you'll have, but this is how my brain is working this out. Either way, if I were to go out and buy a projector at this price point, I'd be pretty happy with this experience this provides, especially the gaming experience, and I'd say it's worth the price. Thanks for watching. If you guys enjoyed the video, leave a like. If you disliked it, leave a dislike. Consider subscribing or supporting me on Patreon. And as always, have a great day every day. Peace.